Okay, so now <clears throat> uh, let's go to the ternary diagram and let's see um, what we can get more out of it. I, I would uh, prefer to go for the residues curve because this is going to be more useful and it's going to include everything that we can see here. <clears throat> so for the residues curve, we would see that um, it, it gives us like the same options. Um, uh, we can have the uh, distillation synthesis ternary map, we can have azeotrope, and we can go to aspirin play a play plus residues curve. I'm, I'm going to first go to this, um, as I mentioned in the previous video, and this is simply as it, it says it's an azeotropic search. It gives us um, uh, information about the available azeotropes um, in our system. So if I if I pick the three components, and this this is all what I need to do actually is to pick which components that I'm interested in finding the azeotrope um, uh, in, and we'll pick the pressure, the property model, the phases, vapor liquid or vapor liquid liquid. Um, usually in the azeotrope, I'm interested in vapor liquid. Um, this is all. It's going to give us some outputs about the pure components. This is the boiling points of each one of them. Um, about the azeotrope, it tells me that the azeotrope is at 59.65 degrees Celsius, and this is 29% um, water um, and 70.7% uh, uh, ether. Um, I can make it in uh, in mass fraction um, rather than mole fraction if I am interested in that. Um, and this is the singular point. So these are all, all the points where the vaporous and liquids curve intersect. And this happens in the pure components because it doesn't have a boiling range, but it has a boiling point. So um, no vapors and or the vapors and liquids curve are the same. And these are the three points. And this is the azeotrope, which is uh, at 59.65. You can generate a report that you can export or, or, or save as an HTML file that you can print later if you want. So for for the um, for the um, as a trope, it's, it's not it's, it's not like a lot of inputs that you want to do. Um, I'm, I'm gonna skip this uh, because it's gonna be similar to what we have here and it's not gonna generate uh, all the uh, outputs that we're gonna get. So this is gonna include everything. Um, you have the option to add more inputs and uh, get more outputs out of it. <coughs> so I'm gonna continue to the um, Aspen Residues Curve. Again, it, it adds one one more um, folder here to the analysis, like what we did in the um, the the previous analysis that, is that we did. Um, and here it says that I have um, components, uh, the three components: the pressure, I have the valid phases, I have the property model, um, and it has here the number of curves. And this is important to understand what is a residue curve. Um, before we go to the radius, residues curve, we need to um, like talk about something that I mentioned in the previous video about the um, uh, the ternary plot that we uh, we we are we are generating. Uh, in the previous case, we, we generated the plot at a constant temperature. We mentioned to our, or we said to Aspen Plus the temperature was 50 Celsius, and this is the temperature. <coughs> that I'm interested in and I'm expecting all the points to be at this temperature. Here in case of distillation, I'm not doing this same thing. I'm generating a three component system plot, a ternary plot, a triangle like the one we produced last time. But in this case, each one of these three components would, would be generated at a different temperature all would, or will represent a different temperature. Um, this is exactly what we saw here that for the pure components, each one of them has a boiling temperature, 100, uh, 118, 168. So um, each one of them is at, at a different temperature and consequently the plot that I'm gonna see or I'm gonna expect now ha will have different temperatures. This is because I'm, I'm doing the uh, plot for the sake of uh, doing the distillation calculations or predictions not for the sake of liquid liquid extraction so here it's it's not uh, like uh, i mentioned in the previous video that yeah, the the t x y plot cannot be now a t x y it's gonna be the the base is a plane not a straight line and then the 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 new variable which is the temperature will make the plot three dimensional plot 
uh, in this case I'm, I'm gonna take a slice uh, or a section of this uh, plot but in in a case of uh, or, or the for, for the residues curve I'm using uh, or doing the slicing uh, with an angle so it's it's not a, a horizontal slice I'm, I'm taking a section with an angle according to the three boiling temperatures of the three components um, and this is what I'm doing here um, I'm gonna run the analysis and I'm gonna kind of explain to you what is uh, what we're looking at when you do the residues curves um, so it, it's kind of weird or, or not uh, kind of familiar kind of plot <clears throat> but this curve is, is, is really helpful actually and this this what this curve says is um, if I'm at uh, any of these points on the on the three component th system diagram and I did distillation um, at this exact pressure so this is at a constant pressure at a constant pressure plot and I'm uh, or I'm, uh, I'm sorry each one of these lines is a constant pressure line um, and uh, I'm doing distillation what output should I expect so this is what what the residues curve means I I'm, I'm at this point and I'm doing distillation and as the distillation goes I'm gonna go this way this way until I go here or if I'm at this point I'm gonna go here 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 and then go this way uh, if I'm this po at this point I'm gonna go here here until I go there this is what the residues curve uh, says uh, this is the path that this component or this mixture of components will uh, will go through until it reaches the uh, final composition um, um, and 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 this this uh, uh, you have to keep in mind that each one of these points has different x y and z values or a different composition for water if the ether and acetic acid um, so the the uh, it, it's not kind of uh, a familiar plot uh, and I, I don't think that most of the people who are watching this video are familiar with it I, I, I knew about it lately actually so um, it's, it's not that kind of uh, familiar or well-known uh, plot but it is useful for again for the sake of ex expecting or predicting um, who, what is the uh, compositions that I would expect from this uh, doing distillation to the mixture that I'm, I'm, I'm working at um, so this is what we get from the residues curve of course you can do some uh, like to go do this tracker the tracker is kind of useful because if if you click on a point it's gonna give you the uh, coordinates of uh, of the point that you are uh, like standing at it's it's kind of um, it, it uh, disappears quickly uh, you can show markers you can show lines only you can show whatever you're uh, interested in you can change the scale you can change uh, like different things about the um, the plot itself um, I am I'm, I'm have I have some flexibility to remove or uh, like uh, show or uh, hide some of these curves if I want to focus on two or three of them um, so again I have I have the freedom to do that uh, I can make it a triangular or a rectangular plot so um, this is uh, useful again for the cases of distillation um, if you are doing distillation for three component systems uh, this would be a nice thing to do um, so uh, this is all for this video and I'm gonna see you in the next video inshallah goodbye